Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, January 22nd, 2021. And as I mentioned last week, the website was going along, was all done. We were moving along smoothly like this lovely big ship crossing the sea. Everything was fine. Just everything was all ready to go. And then over the weekend, some updates and some things happened that we had little control over. And things quickly turned into this. And uh, the seas got rough, and I was up every night this week from 3 o'clock in the morning on for the day, working with uh, people overseas to, to uh, put a permanent remedy to an issue that we discovered when we stress tested the site uh, on the language thing again, my own, my own bad. Should have never asked for that, but we're in it now. And we've gotten some people that are really good at this stuff, and we've brought them on, and they're working on it. And um, I'm not going to say another word when this site is going to be done. I suspect it will be very soon. But uh, I feel badly. I feel I, I feel awful because we were ready to get this thing up this week for everybody and uh, do the instructionals and get it all set to go. But that's the way it is, and I'm sorry. And that's the way it was. It was a very difficult week around here, and I'm sorry. I know it was a disappointment. It's a disappointment to us, but we'll we'll keep going. <laughs> All right, now let's take a look and see what happened on eBay last week. It was kind of a quiet week. There wasn't a lot going on. Uh, there were a number of listings that did pretty well. We're going to go through them, but what I wanted to point out, stick around for the later part of the video, there's a lot of stuff that showed up on uh, eBay and Catawiki this week that will be in this week's newsletter over on bitemout.com, and there's some very nice items. So stick around. We're going to walk through them. All right, and uh, first thing we're going to start with is uh, some things that sold over at Catawiki that I thought were quite nice. One of them was this very attractive double handle, almost trophy style, uh, Meiji period, maybe early uh, Taisho period uh, urn done in bronze. It was beautifully done, very elegant, very dr pretty dramatic looking. Had a mark on the base. If anybody bothered to want to look up and see who the maker was, good looking pot. And I think it went for a fairly reasonable price. It went for 350 euros. It was a good week for people who leave bids. All right, we're going to get to some things that went through that looked to be relative bargains. Uh, like, you know, we've said it millions of times on here. Leave a bid when you see something because uh, people forget too easily to circle back and leave one later. And then it's gone and you say, oh, I should have bought it. But at any rate, that was one of them. I thought that was a pretty nice thing. And the other one was this very nice, large um, uh, okimono carving in ivory. Beautifully done Meiji period, the basket seller. Wonderful example. I thought it was very attractive because it was so vertical looking. And uh, this one um, sold for uh, 515 euros, which isn't bad for these. Uh, it was fairly good size. It was, what was it, 318 millimeters tall. So it was around, um, what's that, uh, divide by 10, about, about uh, 10 or 11 inches tall. Good size piece, good size carving. And uh, then on to this, the inkwell, the bronze inkwell. I thought this was just terrific. Um, and it didn't sell. It didn't make its reserve. I was really surprised. I thought this was a great-looking object. Uh, the, the bag opened up and all that stuff. It was estimated at a couple of thousand euros, which is about what these bring. Uh, but the patina on it was just lovely. And uh, it didn't get any interest, and it kind of surprised me. I thought that would. Very interesting-looking piece. And then hopping over to this, uh, let's see, this was that nice pair of Famille Rose vases with uh, cartouches of figures on them. It had a little bit, a tiny repair up on, uh, up on the top somewhere up around here on this corner. And the pair went for 430 euros or around uh, 500, 550 dollars, which I think was pretty reasonable. Good looking thing, all right? My voice is a little off because I've, I've been not getting a lot of sleep this week. And there's the bottom of it, and that's what the foot rim on these 19th century pots looks like. It's a very classical looking bottom. Remember what that looks like. That's what it should look like. All right, now mosing over here to this. This, I think, was one of the great buys of the week. I thought this was terrific. Star form. Uh, Kang, they called it 18th century. I think it's probably Kang Shi, ju judging by the decoration and so forth. Star shaped dish was about six inches in diameter. Uh, let's see if we can get a better picture of the work. There we go, like this. There it is. Nice uh, iron red decoration and gilding. Nice looking glaze that you can see up here reflecting in the light a little bit. Good underglazed blue decoration running around it. Had a star line or a line in the glaze, but it didn't seem to go through the body. And this plate went for just 80 euros, so for under $100. That was an absolutely great buy. Absolutely great buy. Should have brought uh, 250 to 350 all right, and then over here to this, this was over on eBay. I thought this was a wonderful carving. 
of uh, Ho Tai with his ba bag or a Buddha with his, with his carrying his peach. And he's got a bag over his shoulder. But the carving on this was just really excellent. It's a late Qing carving. It's not very, very old. But it was carved from a beautiful piece of hard, very, very dense wood. Lots of detail, nice patina. Uh, I lo loved all the back work on here with the beads and, the, and, and all the sort of Rococo fanning work around the sides. Here's another detail of the base and the foot and the robes. Beautifully done, just a beautifully done example. And uh, somebody picked it up for $150. This thing was almost a foot tall. It was around 10 inches tall, I think, something like that. Absolutely great buy. And this is that, that heavy, dense, almost like you would. Very heavy, very thick, and it carves beautifully. And this thing needed to be cleaned up and oiled a little bit. But boy, what a great carving for $150. Should have brought four to 500 anyway, I would think. That was a good buy. And this was one of the really great buys of the week, a Yongshan period uh, Famille Rose dish. It was stapled back together. This was a repaired plate. You can see the line here, but visually you don't notice it right away. But it was repaired. Somebody picked this wonderful old dish up for $10. Bucks, or, uh, yeah, $10.98 U.S. It was sold by Ratchers over in um, uh, the U.K., uh, in borders and uh, what a, what an absolute steal that was that was a nice example if you're a Famille Rose collector and you haven't got the deepest wallet in the world there you go uh, the shipping on it was about 30 pounds so you would have picked it up for uh, got it delivered to your house for around fifty dollars that's perfectly fine nice old plate and beautifully decorated always buy it based on the artwork and then over here to this was this nice uh, late Ming uh, dish there it is in this sort of dandy little box with the with the with the with the pheasant or phoenix on it. Uh, a good example. It's a well-known type, but it was a nice one. It was a nice one, a good-looking one. This was from Shangri-La guys, uh, 187 dollars. All right. So as I, what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing a, a lot of very good buys went through this week for people that were really paying attention. If you're really paying attention, you carpet bomb those listings with bids. Somebody probably got some uh, several good buys. I suspect somebody bought a few of them. And then on to this, the pair of early 20th century plates. These are factory factory cups, rather. These were uh, the, the, the mark on the bottom is, is, was from a well-known factory that was in operation around the beginning of the 20th century. But uh, very nicely decorated, beautifully done, signed on the bottoms. And uh, they went for $153, which I think was a good buy. Some, pl some cups with this mark on it. Uh, this set of marks, it's six characters, and I, I, if you want to look it up, you can go over to the Gothberg site and look it up. They have those marks on, and they explain all about this factory. But anyway, $150, I think, was perfectly reasonable for those. It was considered, the, this company was considered to be one of the best uh, kilns uh, operating in China at the time. Uh, they had a large output, but they had very good artists. And then along to this, this was a seller here in New England that had this up, this very nice... He thought it was, uh, I think he was a little optimistic on the date on this. Uh, well, no, 18th century, late 18th, early 19th century, probably 18th century. I thought, I thought he said it was Ming. I guess he didn't. All right, a very nice rank badge, beautiful soft pastel-y colors, nice gilt groundwork, beautiful, uh, even uh, very finely stitched uh, fields of clouds, the wave border at the bottom, all of it very, very nicely done. And it did well. It brought $1,125. But it is a very, very pretty rank badge. Just very pretty, very soft, very elegant. And some of the soft colors in there, the pigments, if, you, if you're a textile or a rug collector, you'll recognize some of those colors uh, from the 18th century. It's how they look also on, uh, on, on, on uh, uh, some Chinese rugs from that period and also on some Persian rugs. They use the same color palettes on uh, some, especially some of the, some of the finer tribal rugs. All right, and then this, this is coming up. This closes in um, uh, tomorrow, or on Sunday, rather. It's this very nice Chinese export 18th century bowl. Very well-known type, but it's a particularly fine one. If you're familiar with these bowls, you'll notice that this is the center of it, and it has this really, really fine central area. Uh, nice landscape or figural landscape scene among buildings, but the shading tends to be very deep and dark. Very, very well done. Here's an overall shot of it. This is an absolutely elegant looking bowl. Beautifully done. Closes in a couple of days. It's up to 400 euros. It is, how big is this thing? Uh, 28 centimeters, so it's about nine, 10 inches, 10 inches of diameter. And uh, ought to go for about 650 to 750 euros. We'll see what it does. It's estimated at eight to a thousand. It's a little, I think, a little on the high side, but not far off. And it doesn't seem to have a bid, I, I mean, a uh, reserve on it. So 
uh, take a shot at it. It's a nice looking thing. And then this plate sold. Um, this was listed over on the uh, on the uh, Catawiki site. Um, very nice looking one lead period dish. And uh, it went off for uh, 330 euros. All right. Uh, these plate. This was a, a rather nicely decorated one, I have to say. The colors were good. Uh, this, the way they got the flowers just really stand alone. Uh, very finely detailed. Nice separation. Nice use of space. And uh, 330 euros. Not bad. And then over here, we're going to get into some of the things that are coming up this week because there were more things coming up this week that looked interesting to me than some of the things that sold last week. There was some good things on there last week as always, and there were some great buys. But I think what's coming up this week, uh, there's some particularly nice things. One of them is this jade. It's being sold by, uh, this is that seller, and I never pronounce it, Igus, Igus Limited, I guess is it. They have good things. They're always handling small objects, very good Netskis, uh, Okimono, small Japanese, Chinese, small good objects. And this is a very nice uh, uh, 18th century uh, soft green jade of a recumbent horse. Beautifully carved, nice surface, nice details. Um, there's a tag on the back of it. I haven't, I haven't actually read it, but there's a better shot of it. This is a very, very nice little jade. Absolutely great. It is up to uh, $1,262 with two days to go. I suspect it'll probably double that or more at the end. But it's a good one. It looks very authentic to me. I like it. And then onto this, he also has up this is this very nice Tibetan uh, bronze, good old patina on it. So a couple of little turquoise stones set into it. Nice old example, good surface. Let's we get a shot of the bottom. There it is. Oh, he's got a, it's got the cl old cloth over it from when it was mounted, so it wouldn't scratch tabletops. But anyway, good looking, good looking, uh, a good looking bronze. It's up to nine hundred and eighty-one dollars. Expect that to go up at the end too very good color on it okay it's probably 18th century it's not ming it's 18th century probably but very charming and, and very fine quality casting which is the whole ball game and then on to this this transitional period uh chinese blue and white uh vase with the garlic neck on it this is a nice one this is a really really nice one it's got figures on it um uh, uh warriors and so forth they've got a bannerman in here and uh, here's another shot, the horses. There's one of my horses. And uh, the figures around it, but the very nice shading, good colors. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. And this is what the, pic the bottoms of these should look like. I had a bunch of inquiries in the last couple of weeks on the identification uh, assistant uh, service on the site. People that were uh, sending me pictures of tr uh, transitional pieces, what really looked like transitional pieces, but they were copies. They are copying transitional period porcelains right now in China like crazy. Uh, especially uh, brush pots, uh, beakers, and these vases, this particular type of vase in, in particular. Uh, pay close attention to how the foot rims look on them and pay close attention to the details of the drawings, how the colors are shading. Look for these sort of U-shaped grasses growing around the bottom and this sort of slight haze sometimes to the faces because the glaze was thick and some of the glaze, uh, some of the cobalt softened under the glaze a bit, spread out and blurred the image just slightly during the firing. Uh, there's a lot to look for, but be very careful if you see these turning up in numbers anywhere because they are copying them like crazy right now because they're starting to bring money. All right, this one's up to $112. Ought to bring, you know, you know, in the thousands. Ought to bring, you know, four to six thousand somewhere around there anyway. So it's got a long way to go, but it's a nice looking one. All right. And then on to this. I thought this was terrific. It's one of these, uh, it's a 19th century jar, pear-shaped jar. It has a, a chin lung mark on the bottom, which is apocryphal. But they did these to simulate bronzes. And they used that, that soft brown glaze, uh, iron glaze over them. But this pot, if you look at it carefully, is just beautifully potted. The shaping of the side, the proportions, the curves, the way the foot cants in slightly, and then rises out around the corner and then has this sort of soft, almost sima curve here on the uh, leading up to the neck and then this nicely trimmed square uh, shape uh, around underneath the, the mouth of the vase. Just a good looking pot. Here's a picture of the foot on it, obviously a 19th century foot. And notice how neatly though the glaze ends at the foot. What a really, really fine job. Whoever, whoever the potter was on this really knew what he was doing. Uh, beautifully done. You can see the darkened pooling of some of the glaze where it meets at the top of the foot. 
just a good example. It's up to just $110. Uh, I think it'll do a good bit better than that. This is a dandy little vase. Uh, and what was it, about eight inches tall or something like that? 11 and a quarter inches tall. This is a good little vase. Figure, you know, six or $800 for it anyway, I would guess. And then on to uh, the set of plates, a big set of plates. These are, these are quite nice, actually, uh, a, a set of seven. I like the way they arrange them. And uh, 18th century, sort of unusual design, uh, Chinlung period, uh, you know, export type uh, plates. But uh, I like the pattern. I like the way they did the gilded li uh, lotuses around the sides and then did these precious objects with flowers and so forth through the center in a nice, nice uh, creamy glaze. It reflects nicely there in the cavetto going around it. And uh, these are just uh, up to $53. You know, they should bring uh, seven of them, figure them, you know, at least a, uh, $80 to $110 a piece or something like that, but a good looking set of plates. And then uh, moseying on over to here, uh, this is a, a, a seller named um, Icali, Icali, I don't know who they are, they're in Canada. But they have this nice looking pair of who form vases. They apparently have a receipt from them when they were sold at Freeman's a number of years ago. And they were, they sold for, uh, according to the receipt, for about $6,000 as, as uh, Guangxu Mark and Period. I'm not convinced they're Mark and Period Guangxu. I do think they're at least uh, early 19th century, possibly Republic. They are beautifully enameled, very nice uh, salad on ground. The flowers are beautifully shaded. Uh, there's a nice looking butterfly on there. Here's the side, the, the ears. There are the bottoms to them. All right. The spacing to me on some of these marks look a little bit off to be um, Guangxu, uh, the way that, that, that's sort of in a, a peculiarly large space between here and here. Usually they're a little tighter, a little closer, and the foot's a little different. But I suspect they are probably Republic. But very good looking. And uh, right now they're only up to $86. All right, those will be, these are all going to be in the newsletter this week. And this is another thing from this seller, Ikele, uh, a very attractive recumbent uh, uh, female figure. It's a horn carving. This is not rhino horn or ivory or anything that anybody should be worried about. But a nice example, very well done. And I like the way the carver took into account the, uh, the difference in color. So it sort of ends at the, at the, at the top of her, of her dress up over her body and then her face and so forth. Then this lighter knop in her hair up top. But the quality of the carving of the fabric all through here is really, really well done. Nice looking thing. And it's up to $3. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, chase that down. It's probably early 20th century, but it's good looking. And then on to this, this very nice uh, goo form Famille Rose vase. And this is a really unusual example because it has this uh, grisaille uh, decoration around the midsection, something you don't see very often. And uh, here's a picture of the bottom, nice 19th, late 19th century foot rim on this, but a very, very unusual vase. This is a really unusual one. It's got the, here you have the fish and so forth at the bottom, and then you have this European boating scene in the, in the middle. So this is obviously an export piece, but very unusual. This is a really unusual piece. And then more at the top, a more traditional Famille Rose uh, rendering of dragons in the clouds. Just an interesting, interesting pot. And I'd, I'm going to be really interested to see what this thing brings. It's up to just $6.50. It closes in seven days. And, uh, I, you know, to, to me, uh, a collector that recognizes this and sees that European scene uh, we'll chase this up, you know, into the into the twelve to fifteen hundred dollar range, and I think anything under that's a steal. It's a very very unusual piece. It's going to be a good week coming up. Some nice things coming up, and then Josh Chamberlain, uh, Juice one four nine nine. He's got a sale up with a whole bunch of things. This caught my eye. Nice big pair of rock crystal uh, figures, big ones. Uh, they're probably early twentieth century. Uh, I don't know if he even bothered to date them. These are so hard to date. But they're uh, 28 inches tall, okay? They're two feet, almost two feet tall, over two feet tall, all right? They sold, um, or uh, let's see here, uh, the Provenance pair was sold at Sotheby's Hong Kong in October of 2001. It was lot 720. So if you have that catalog, you can go back and look it up. Uh, early 20th century carvings. They did a lot of carvings in this style in the early 20th century, too. They did them in, in you know, you've seen them in, 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 in quartz. You've seen a lot of them in jadeite and so forth. They were extremely popular. But these are beasts. These things are huge. Two and a half foot tall pair. All right. And I'll be really fascinated to see what they bring. Um, I think you can uh, pretty safely assume 
I don't know, two, two to three, four thousand. Who knows? Who knows what they'll bring? I can't remember the last time I saw a pair of rock crystals uh, uh, this big anywhere. All right, these are really big. And then over here to this, Josh also has up this nice Kangxi vase with gilt ormolu mounts on them. The mounts look late 19th, early 20th century, but they're nicely done French mounts. Nice Kangxi uh, pot that was worked into them. It's up to $762. And on these, you know, you're always going to be chasing. Uh, the collectors like them because, of the, because they're interesting and historic. And decorators love these things uh, because the people like to have them in the, these big show-off houses. They think so great on the mantles. So we'll see how that does. And then over to uh, this, Josh also has up this nice Kangxi dish. It's got a couple of staple repairs in it. But if you're if you're not in the position where you could buy one of these perfect for you know two or three or four thousand dollars depending on the size, here's a perfectly good one with very good decoration. Forget the little repair. This all here is repair area. You can get that cleaned up. But what's the great part about this dish is is that the details are un, a, a bit unusually fine for underglazed blue. Just very very delicately done. Very nice shading in around here. Uh, let's see if we can bring this in a little closer. There we go. You can see the repair. There's the repair. I love how they, they sort of blotched up the repair and then they tried to paint it in. I think that's kind of charming. But at any rate, there are people around who can fix that. And uh, the Phoenix is nicely done. And as I said, lots of detail. And uh, this plate is up to just $21. So, you know, how far, how, you know, how bad is, that's not bad at all. And the size of it, it is 15 inches across. It's a charger. It's a big beast of a thing. All right, and then over here to this. This closes in one day and 21 hours. This is a really, really pretty uh, late 19th century uh, Famille Rose vase. It's of that style, and it's 45 centimeters tall, about 16 to 18 inches tall. What, but it has going for it in particular, you've, this va type of vase is fairly common. But the quality of the decoration on this vase is much better than 99% than of them. It's much finer. The colors are vibrant and strong. The relief work, if you look carefully here, you see this relief work that has that brown dressing over it, is very crisp, very sharp, very well done. And this makes it does make a difference in the value. This is a particularly good vase. And it is quite large for one of these, 16, 18 inches. Uh, they do make them that size. They don't make them much bigger, some are maybe a little bigger. But most of, the, most of these vases in this palette are, you know, are under 13 or 14 inches typically. And I think this is a nice one. And it is over on Katawiki, and it is up to just 188 bucks. Uh, you should be comfortable, you know, paying, uh, what, for that? 15 inches, there's a six to $800, something like that. I think his estimate on this was very reasonable, 450 to 500 euros. I don't think that's bad at all. I'd buy, I'd buy it for that right now. <laughs> All right, and then on to this is this very nice, it's a late piece of Kutani, but it's a really nice one. It's got immortals all over it, this sleepy-eyed recumbent elephant at the bottom, vibrant colors, uh, uh, probably Meiji period, but beautiful example, and, and they didn't do them very often in this size. This is a big uh, piece of uh, Kutani. It is, uh, da, 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 I think it was, was it like 15 inches wide or something? They hide their sizes down here. 36 centimeters, so it's, um, yeah, 14-inch 14 inch, 14 inch dish, 15-inch dish, roughly. Nice big one. He, they have it listed as Meiji period. Um, I, I can't argue with them about it. They know their stuff. I, it would be eight, Meiji or early Taisho, but uh, no matter. It's a beautiful, beautiful plate. If you're a Katani buyer, you want to check this one out because it's unusual with the Liu Huans all over it. All right, and that's about it for the week. Um, we will be working on the on the on the on the on the on the, on the mysterious website over the weekend, and I'm hoping I have somebody. I got somebody in who's going to work out that. Uh, he's at, he's supposed to be a world expert on uh, WordPress uh, language uh, programs. The big problem all along has been this language translator, which is an unbelievably complicated thing to get working right. And if we can't get it working right, we're just gonna post the thing in English and when they can figure out how to add the language aspect to it and really make it functional, I'll be thrilled to death. But uh, uh, I'm, it's like waiting for Godot. At any rate, we'll get it done. If you haven't subscribed to us yet here, please do. Uh, join us over at bitamount.com. Sign up for the uh, weekly newsletter. We, you can you can see the you get notified when the uh, newsletter page gets update, updated with the things we find. Leave a comment and uh, have a wonderful weekend. I hope to get some sleep and I'm absolutely exhausted. All right, have a great weekend and uh, uh, and good luck out there. And check out the things on the site this weekend. Some nice things. All right, bye bye.